It is non-event with no effect whatsoever on the course of uh, things in Syria. The regime, it is actually um, just to prevent the Russians from naturalizing, killing people with chemical weapons. I think the why the regime used chemical weapons without military necessity is that just to make it something natural. It is only an ordinary weapon like any other weapons. The Western powers are not very happy with this. It is okay to kill them with bomb bombs, it's okay. It is okay to organize industry of killing them under torture, but not with chemical weapons that it happened that we have laws, international laws, about uh, preventing this. And if they tolerate this, and they have been tolerating it for five years now, this means that the international uh, laws will be extremely non-effective with and tomorrow we may see, and actually we saw Russians using chemical weapons in London, <laughs> killing an agent, a double agent. So this will lead to, uh, to very uh, counterproductive uh, effects on the Western power. So it was like this, it is not about us at all, it is not about protecting Syrians, it will have no effects on the course of uh, the struggle in Syria. It seems that they informed the Russians and even the regime that will hit this or that, uh, and that, and only three people were injured, but they destroyed some buildings. So it's about them, it's about their narcissistic uh, status and narcissistic self-perception. It is not about uh, us and Syrians will uh, uh, keep on being killed with other weapons and maybe it will be even a positive for the regime. The regime is now celebrating its victory against the, uh, the imperialist <laughs> aggression. So, it is a st an extremely unethical, stupid thing uh, that um, the victims will stay victims and the powerful will stay powerful and oh, everyone is celebrating victory apart from the Syrian people. It was a revolution, a peaceful revolution for six months or something, seven months. Then it was civil war, I mean Syrians fighting against Syrian for change or for preventing change from the side of the regime. In, two th in July 2012, the national framework, the national setting of the struggle collapsed. And with uh, Iranians being, came into the country, and when the, uh, if you remember, something ha very important happened in July 18, 2012, high security officers were assassinated in Damascus. And many people thought it was maybe the opposition was in a way, no, it was the victory of the Iranian party within the Assad regime. Then the regime withdrew its security and military power from the Kurdish regions in the, Syria, in the country and the PKK people from Turkey in thousands came into Syria and their strategy, their approach to the Kurdish situation, they imported with them their struggle with the Turkish government and the Turkish government did the same soon after. Then jihadis from dozens of countries, Sunni jihadis came within Syria and the first bar bombs were used in July 2012 
and the most importantly peaceful demonstration stopped completely from the beginning of the revolution in march 2011 up to july 2012 there were peaceful demonstrations though the revolution was militarized and uh, 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 before the end of 2012 but because the regime used battle bombs and warplanes no peaceful demonstration were seen were seen in Syria since July. So the national setting of struggle, Syrians versus Syrians, was destroyed. And now we have Iranians, we have Sunni jihadism, we have PKK people, and soon we'll have Hezbollah, we'll have uh, 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 Shia uh, uh, militias from Iraq and we have after a bit the chemical massacre then the chemical deal between the Americans and the Russians and then the Americans themselves in Syria so how can we talk about Syrian civil war when we have the Americans then the Russians and before them the Iranians and the Hezbollah and the Sunni jihadis and the Shia jihadis and then Turkey uh, in 2016 Turkey no, it is in a way it's a regional and a global. It is a, a world war, but confined, contained within Syria. The turning point was July 2012. I was in Duma at the time when I wrote this in Istanbul. The region was bombed. The region that uh, witnessed a chemical massacre ten days ago. At that time, it was early July. 2013 I was there and I was thinking I'm a writer a former political prisoner and I was in a region that was bombed on a daily basis I addressed intellectuals in the West not asking them to pressure the government to intervene but asking for help help us in a way find a way to help. I, I, I don't address governments. I'm a writer and I address writers, artists, intellectuals. And I hope that in a way they can pressure parliaments, governments to help us not intervene. We didn't ask anyone to intervene and overthrow our regime. We were at that time still very strong, but we need to be able to protect ourselves. And we had, I think, tens of thousands of fighters, and it was possible for Syrians to overthrow the regime up to that time. That time, especially after the chemical massacre that happened a month, a month and a half after my letter, it, it, in a few weeks it became impossible. A chemical massacre, which was a big gift to nihilist Islamists, who were growing before actually. But it became a hopeless situation after the chemical massacre, then even worse after the chemical deal between Russians and America. The year 2013 was horrible for future of inclusive Syria, of democratic Syria. It, became, it led to this unprecedented situation and in my uh, opinion the worst thing ever was the chemical deal. When it began, when the revolution began, no, we thought that Syria is only another country and a small one. So Syria is not very, it is not, uh, is less than one quarter of Egypt in population and in area. It is a bit bigger than Tunisia. So we, so we thought that is only another country. But it seems now Syria is in the Middle East, which is the heart of the world. And it seems that um, there are so many um, 
global powers interested in what's happening in Syria and they don't want real change. Maybe it is because of Israel or the importance of Israel's security in the region. I don't like the geopolitical uh, approach and discourses about the Middle East. I don't like the culturalist discourses that talk about Islam, Christianity, uh, mentality, uh, um, Arab mentality, I don't know the, these issues, which are very reactionary approach and racist. Uh, it can be racist. But I think they play some role. Uh, in, in the book, I try to explain the situation in Syria through looking to the Syrian society, Syrian state, Syrian political actors, people like us. But it seems that for the political, for the global powers, now these uh, factors are very important. And at least since the chemical deal, uh, it, be, it became clear that the change in Syria is no longer, was no longer in the hands of Syrians. It became something related to the Americans and the Russians and the UN Security Council. And you know that the Russians has used veto at the UN Security Council for 12 times now. So in a way, we, we've been Palestinized and the regime is realized, but with Russia occupying the role of America in relation uh, to Israel. Uh, and now you see, we Syrians are everywhere in the world. And all, almost all the world is in Syria. I mean, we have the Americans, we have the Russians, we have the French and the British, we have Indirectly, the Saudis, the, the Qataris, we have the Turks directly. We have the Sunni jihadism, or we had, they are still, some of them are there. We have Shia jihadis from so many countries. So, Syria, in this meaning, a global metaphor. It is a global symbol of something that transcends the size of our country. We are 23 million people only. The, the Spanish, I guess, 60 million or? 40, 40. 40. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you are almost two times. <laughs> and um, our area is less than 200,000 kilometers. But it's Syria is, in a way, a microcosm. And the world is macro Syria. And this meaning, yeah, Syria is very important. And the Syrian cause is one key of understanding the present world, maybe even than Spain between 1936 and 1939. It is, and it's clear that it is challenging everybody. The West, the, the left, of course, the West and the East, the left, the right, the mainstream, everybody is being challenged and they are talking about it. And Though I am a leftist, but my previous comrades are extremely arrogant, ignorant, and insensitive. It is the deepest layer. It is like a building. You know, I guess you saw so many buildings crumble down in Syria, right? Mm -hmm. The revolutionary is the dead bodies there. It is not dead. I mean, it is the deepest layer. There's a lot of rubble over it. We are now in the fourth stage of the Syrian revolution. First, the revolution proper. Then, the Sunni-Shia struggle since early 2013. Then, the imperialist stage after the American intervention and then the Russian intervention. Then, after Aleppo 2016, a fourth stage with the, with rehabilitating the regime. It is of course zigzagging, but the on the short term the revolution is crushed. We are crushed. We are defeated. But the regime cannot achieve victory because they cannot. The regime and its elites cannot develop an inclusive an inclusive vision of Syria. They will keep fighting against us, though we are crushed. And 
they lose the battle in the end. I'm sure of this, but of course it has been extremely tragic for us. <laughs> Thank you.